Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Saturday. All right, I want to take you up to Vail. Vail, Colorado now officially open. They opened yesterday. It's largely man-made snow. You can see one of the runs right here. You're looking off into the Gore Range. Not a lot of natural snow left from previous storm systems. It's overcast. We've got high winds over the peaks this morning, fanning out some of this wave cloudiness. But that's really the recipe right now. It's, it's largely just man-made snow at this point. It's been warm. It's been extremely dry. And when you look at the snowpack numbers, this is a snow water equivalent. When you look at the snowpack, everybody's in red. In Colorado, Utah, Nevada, a lot of California, New Mexico, very dry. Um, you're looking at probably 80 to 90 percent below normal snowpack for this time of the year. And I was looking at some of the records, the period of records in Colorado for some of these basins. And right now, this is the driest it's been, in some cases, in, in the entire 30-year period of record for some of these basins. So we need colder temperatures and we need snow. We'll get a little of that in the other uh, forecast. Here's radar across the, uh, the west right now. Two areas of energy, one up here sliding across the northern Rockies, another... This is that low that's just kind of stalling and spinning over the high Sierra, and you'll get some, uh, you'll get, you'll get waves of snow today, tomorrow, um, all in fact, all the way through the 17th as this low finally moves away, 16 into 17, it begins to affect the interior Rockies, Nevada, Utah, Wyoming, Colorado, New Mexico, and Arizona. So this is the low that we'll be watching um, over the next probably three to four days. All right, let's go to, uh, here's water vapor satellite imagery. Kind of give you the top down uh, look at this. There's your low. You can see the spin. Again, the track will take it into this direction. You've got another piece of flow up here into the northern Rockies. That's what we were looking at with that energy. So it's it's kind of a split flow. You know, this what you're looking at here is not a cold flow pattern. This is a relatively warm pattern. You look at the origins of this low. It's out here in the Pacific, right? That's a pretty warm origin. In the heart of winter, you'll typically, we can get the pattern to break and you'll get a lot of storms that come out of Canada. That's what brings the cold air. It's kind of bottled up at this point, just not seeing it happen. So here are my bullet points. Here's what I'm seeing in this forecast period. We've got high Sierra snow for probably the next two or three days. Now the level today is about 9,500 feet, maybe down to 9,000 at times. That level will fall tomorrow into the 17th, probably all the way down to 7,000 feet. So there's a little, it's kind of a cold core low, the spinning low. So as it kind of moves over, it'll, it'll kind of pull in a little bit of that colder air aloft, um, but it's not terribly cold. Then that low will move into the interior, like I was saying. And then there are actually two additional storm systems behind that. I'll show you those in the pressure fields coming up. Here are your best odds of snow for Colorado, Tahoe, Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, and interior BC. So here's how you read it. For Utah, you've got moderate accumulations coming afternoon, evening, 1116 into the morning of 1117. Now I'll tell you with this storm system, there's definitely some disagreement on how much precipitation this is going to deliver to the Wasatch. Southern Utah looks like it's in pretty good shape, along with northern Arizona. But how much will the Wasatch get? And to me, it looks like with a dominant southwest type of wind, that does not always deliver to the Wasatch, to the canyons of Little and Big, uh, uh, Cottonwood Canyons. So... You know, preferably we'd love to have some sort of a northwest flow, but that's not going to be the case. This, this storm's kind of taking a southern track. So how much snow will fall, it's yet to be seen. Uh, it's, I think when you're, if you're saying, is it going to be over a foot? Probably not. Is it going to be under a foot? Probably with that type of a setup. And then there's another moderate snow accumulation coming, PM 11.18 into the morning of 11.19. Now that one, that one might be a touch colder. So that's how you read those dates. I won't go through all of those, but those are some of the forces that we're fighting right now. Wind direction is king when it comes to mountain forecasting. That's why it matters, you know, what direction the wind's going to be uh, coming from.
in the Wasatch. So look at Snowmass Colorado. So this is a time I'd forecast you're looking through a slice of the atmosphere all the way up to jet stream level. This is the current time and you move in this direction into the future. So for Snowmass it's very dry for the next 24 hours. Then you start to see a little bit of green move into the forecast here. 17 on the 17th, late 16 into the 17th through early 18. But I'll tell you, guys, there's not a lot of green there. There's not a ton of lift. I'm looking at the wind barbs. There's some, some lift right there. And then the flow is kind of flat out of the west-southwest. So th that's sort of the problem uh, up in the Wasatch is, you know, it's all about lift and the, and the wind direction. There's not a ton of it here. I think this will accumulate some snow across the West Elks and snow mass. I just don't think it's going to be a whole lot. And keep in mind, it's still pretty warm. So that factors in as well. There's not a lot of efficiency. Uh, pressure fields. So this is the, the middle of the atmosphere pressure anomalies. So this is our low coming out of California. This is effective on Sunday, the 16th. <laughs> So that's going to move in this direction. And notice behind it, there's another drop in pressures. Big drop up here in the northeast with some snow and some wind and colder temperatures up there. Period 2, this is 1119. So now you're looking at that, uh, that next area of low pressure. It takes a similar track into um, the desert southwest. That'll affect a lot of the four corners. Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, Colorado. That's the 19th. Now this is the 21st, this is the third storm system. Another one comes in, another drop in pressures, dip in the jet stream. This one's a little further north, but still kind of a similar track through California. Um, this one might be the coldest of the three. It looks to me like this one would be the coldest. So there might be some hope after 1120 with all of this. Um, let's look at total precipitation through the 19th. So four to five day total precip as if everything fell as rain. <clears throat> so when you see the yellows here on this rolling accumulation, you can see the yellows, that's one inch of liquid. Um, that's a key break point. You can see there's that's potentially up over the Tetons. There's a couple of pockets there over the high uh, Uintas, Southern Utah, definitely in California up over the Cascades. Um, so that's a key break point in Southwest Colorado as well. <clears throat> Let's look at um, snowfall. Uh, this is a 10 to one ratio as if all of that, you know, this is ha how much snow would fall. And again, where you see uh, the deep purple, that's at least six inches. The bright pink is a foot and the whites that's two feet. And you can see there's a couple places there over the high Sierra that break out into those whites of two feet. But you're looking at at least six inches up here in the Wasatch, the high is probably up to a foot. You can see that with the brighter pinks. Same up here into the Tetons, the Wind Rivers. Um, a little drier period right here. Not a lot falling through the 19th in central uh, Idaho or northern Oregon, southern Washington state. So how does that actually play out? Let me show you the Southwest before I show you my forecast. This is the Southwest. Again, you can see some of those two footers over the uh, 13ers and the 14ers there in, in California. But definitely six to 12 down here in Southwest Colorado, Southern Utah, Bryant Head, Arizona Snow Bowl. You may be in excess of a foot in those areas. Here's my forecast. Grand totals by 1119. So starting in the Sierra, it's, it's generally one to two feet through Mammoth. And this is, it, it, the higher up you are, the better off you're going to be. It's generally one to two feet. Again, there's your drier area through a lot of, and I pointed that out just a second ago, not a lot of accumulation there. In fact, not a lot of accumulation. Kind of fighting a, a warmer pattern up there with a rain snow line that's going to cut into some of the accumulations. Alieska does well during this period. Um... Eh, not a ton of snowfall up here, three, four, five, six inches in Montana. Kind of a decent shot right there across the Tetons with eight to 10. I, I stuck with my six to 12 over the Wasatch. I'm just not totally confident 
how much precipitation is going to fall between the 16th and the 17th. So it didn't change anything. I think 6 to 12 is a good capture for that. Uh, hefty totals down here across Bryant Head and uh, Snowball. Less accumulation up here. I didn't change much here in Colorado, looking at potentially three to six inches, Summit County, Front Range High Peaks. I'll do a zoom in of Colorado here in a second, but the bigger numbers are in western Colorado and certainly in southwest Colorado. Um, that's where you're going to find some of the biggest numbers. So let me zoom into Colorado. Again, grand totals by 1119. I've got six, five, six, seven, eight here across the uh, Aspen, Buttermilk, uh, Highland, Snowmass zone, Crested Butte. Maybe up to 10 with that, that, after that front comes, once that low comes in, essentially the front will, will rotate the winds out of the southwest. That can generally do okay for Powderhorn. The LaSalle Mountain area, the high uh, LaSalle's there, quite a bit of snow accumulation out of that. And I've got 8 to 12 over the top of the uh, the, uh, the San Juans, including Wolf Creek. I dropped these numbers 3 to 4 over northern New Mexico. 4's in Monarch, 4's in Summit County, Keystone. Um, again, that's all the way through the 19th. Um, let's go up to the northeast, look at uh, rolling accumulation here over the next four or five days. So de there's definitely some pockets, again, where you see the deep purples, that's at least six inches. And there's at least uh, six, there's definitely some pockets of that over parts of northern Vermont, northern New Hampshire, northern Maine, upstate New York, up to parts of Mount Montremblant. Here's my forecast through the 19th, total uh, snow. So 8 to 10 up there through Stowe, Jay Peak, Tremblant. That's probably where I think we maximize. 8 over Whiteface, 7 at Mount Washington. Snow Ridge, rain, snow. Uh, probably rain, snow over Whiteface. I'm just not sure how much, you know, will it be 8 inches at Whiteface? Could be. And then less as you go south. But that's a total through 1119. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this, uh, this mountain weather update. Appreciate you guys tuning in here. Take care and have a great day.